I'm honored to have Joel Rosenberg as my guest today. Uh, he was passing through. Of course, he's, he always visits with us, but it's an honor to have him. And I want to take this time, Joel, to welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good to be with you. Yes. And I uh, want to ask you, from your point of view, uh, it looks like God has given you so much understanding of what's happening in the Middle East, and especially Iran. What's your take? Well, uh, I think we're living in the most dangerous moment in the history of the Middle East. And yet, at the same time, I think we're living in the moment of the most dramatic openness among Muslims, among Jews, among all the people of the Middle East to the gospel in the history of the world. And so it's a, it's a, it's a unique moment because it's, it's, there's, we've, we've seen genocide in the Middle East in recent years uh, with the Islamic, Islamic State in Syria and Iraq literally actively trying to annihilate the Christian population. Um, we see the horrific uh, ways that countries like Iran are treating Christians as well as all of their people. And yet, we're seeing the most openness yes. uh, among the people of the, of the Middle East to the gospel. Doesn't mean they're all coming to Christ yet, but they're, but they're listening. They're open. They're, they're, they're searching. They're 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 seeking. They're not. They're literally seeking the frequency of of, of your television network uh, of the Iran Alive Ministries. They're they're seeking to understand, especially from people like themselves, former Muslims, uh, Jews who've come to faith in Jesus, whatever their background. They're trying to understand: Is there another way? What is the right way? I, I think that's fascinating. I mean, it's dangerous, but it's. It's probably the one of the most fruitful seasons in the history of the church. So I find myself encouraged even amidst all kinds of horror. Amen. Well, uh, God is doing a tremendous work in the Middle East and with visions, dreams, miracles all, all over the place among Muslims. How about the Jews? How about the Israel? Well, we're not coming to faith as fast as you guys. Uh, you know, uh, but I mean, it's, it's, first of all, let's just acknowledge to, to the audience uh, that a Jewish follower of Jesus and a person who was raised in the Shia Muslim faith who's come to faith in Jesus, this is not normal historically. You know, we, we ought to be trying to kill each other historically, but, but Christ has so changed who we are, and I, I think this is the picture of what peace can be when Christ is at the center of that. But look, um, I, I, we did a recent study, it came out about a year ago. Uh, we now believe there are 871,000 Jewish followers of Jesus in the United States alone. Wow. Now there are about 30,000 in Israel and several hundred thousand around the rest of the world. So roughly speaking, there are about a million wow. Jewish followers of Jesus on the planet today in 2019 when when I was born in 1967, there were fewer than 2,000 Jewish followers of Jesus on the entire planet Earth. Yes. So we've gone from 2,000 to about a million in 52 years. So that's a lot of growth. Yes, praise and, God. And yeah. in a world yeah. of only 16 or 17 million yes. Jewish people, a million, that's a lot, right? That's we're 8, 9, 10%. We're getting up to you know, a good percentage there. Uh, now, there are more Muslim converts to Christianity, as far as you and I have discussed, and we understand it, uh, upwards of 10 million or more worldwide. In a world of 1.6 billion Muslims, um, that still feels like a few. However, again, the numbers are not the important. It's the dynamic. Yes. And, the, and, and that's what's exciting me is it's like a stock chart. If you were investing in stocks, for 1,400 years of Islam, you would see almost no conversions. Yes. And so if you looked at the whole stock chart, you'd see a flat line. But if you looked at the 20-year the chart, the 30-year chart, the 10-year chart, you'd see this huge spike. Right. Same thing with the Jews. Yeah. 2,000 years of Jewish evangelism, almost no success, almost no fruit. But you look at the the 10 year chart, the 20 year, the 30 year chart, and you see this big spike. Amen. And we should be investing on the spike. Yes. Right? You should always share the gospel with everybody, always. But when you see movement, you say, let's invest more heavily. 
Amen. And I, that, that's why I, I'm so supportive of that's Iran right. Alive that's Ministries, right. <laughs> and I want you to support Iran Alive Ministries because if there was ever a moment to plant the seed of the gospel through satellite television technology, going right over the heads of the governments, right over the heads of the clerics, this is that moment. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm uh, sure, and I can see God is not done with Israel and the Jews. Uh, there are still many promises Amen. to come Amen. to Christ, and we are doing our part. You are. You're, in fact, you're driving us to jealousy <laughs> because more Muslims are coming to Christ. So we're like, oh, come on, uh, we want to catch up. <laughs> That's right. It's fine. And, uh, there is a movement inside Iran, even among Muslims, that they are saying, why should we hate the Jews? Mm -hmm. Because the government say death to Israel, they, they say, well, tell us why, we don't trust mm -hmm. you. We're not going to hate them just because you say it. So there is a movement there. Now there is a... Uh, and, and let me just add one thing there. It is fascinating, when I travel, I've, I've traveled from Morocco to Afghanistan, meeting Muslim converts and interviewing them, and I do find that, that, that a Muslim who's left Islam and come to faith in Jesus Christ tends to abandon all of their Islamic teaching. And if that, if that includes, which it often does, hatred for Jews, yeah. hatred for Israel, they jettison it as much as they've jettisoned all of it to embrace the Jewish Messiah, Jesus, and the country that he was born and raised and died and resurrected in, which is Israel. Those who come to faith from a nominal Christian background do not always jettison yes. whatever teaching they grew up with in their historic church. And so sometimes that does include anti-Jewish, anti-Israel teaching. And, and, and some of those believers, while they love Jesus, yes. they have a harder time loving Jewish people. That's right. And uh, it's a spiritual thing. Some uh, Muslims become Christians, still they have a struggle yeah. uh, loving the Jews. A Palestinian Christian, I think, would be, or Muslim coming to faith, it's still, it's, it's a very deep and tender right. or, or real wound, let's say, so it's harder to do. That's why on our channel, I frequently invite Jews, I have had rabbis, I've had you several yeah, times, uh, uh. just to show the people, this is what Jesus does. Jesus converts a Muslim like me, and I love the world, and I love the Jews, and here you become mm. a Christian, and you love Muslims. And uh, mm. you have Joshua Fun actually not just loving with emotions, you're doing things yeah. for, for the people in the Middle East, right. non-Jews. Right, yeah. Jews and her neighbors. And uh, right. we, we believe very passionately that God is, is working among both, and we see it through you, we see it through others. And it's encouraging. Uh, and again, more Muslims are coming to faith in Jesus Christ in the last 50 years or so than in 14 centuries combined. So how can you not get excited about that? I'm, I'm excited it, about that. It is. It's exciting what God is doing. Uh, I'm, I want to ask you a question. I think you're the best person that can answer this. Uh, most qualified. Now, there are two sets of prophecies in the Bible. Even though there's going to be attack on Israel with all those neighboring nations which are Muslims, at the same time, there are sets of prophecies that those Muslim nations will come to Christ, including Iran, right. Egypt, and others. Right. How do you match this? How do you marry these two yeah. sets of prophecies? Well, they're intriguing. Uh, I know. <laughs> Sadly, most Christians don't even study prophecy. They yeah. sort of, yeah. you know, 27% of the Bible is prophecy. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, half of the prophecies in the Bible have already come true, uh, either geopolitically or uh, Israel being reborn as a country or Messiah coming, Jesus, the first time. But most Christians, sadly, ignore Bible prophecy. It's too complicated, it's too controversial, but they're missing some very exciting points. Even if you don't drill into every nuance of every prophecy, the way I love to do, some things are clear, and that is terrible judgments are coming on every nation in the world, uh, and specifically on the countries of the Mid Middle East. The Middle Eastern countries, Israel and her neighbors included, um, are specified. Those judgments are, are written down, and they're pretty bad. So part of that motivates me to reach every Jew, every Muslim, every nominal Christian in the Middle East with the gospel of Jesus Christ now because the closer we get to these judgments it may be too late so I don't want to have no I don't want to have studied prophecy and known what was coming and then not done everything possible yes. to share the gospel to strengthen the local churches mostly for them to share the gospel 
um, and then wind up staring at Jesus one day and having him say, you read the prophecies, why didn't you do anything? Yeah. So that's one set of prophecies, is judgment. And that should motivate us not to be happy about judgment, but to be sad that people are going to die without Christ, we should go reach them. But the other set of prophecies, as you say, there are some, not a lot, but there are a few that indicate specific countries are going to have a, a great um, measure of grace and the pouring out of God's Holy Spirit in the last days of history. Um, Iran is definitely one of them. Uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 49, you and I have discussed this at length, including on the air in, in Iran, uh, or well, to, into Iran. Uh, and we've talked about how the Bible says that God will judge the leaders of, uh, of, of Elam, one of the ancient yes. names of Persia or Iran, but it also says God will move his throne there. Yeah. Now, we know from the other prophecies that God is going to put his throne in Jerusalem, right. where I live currently, and Jesus is going to sit on that throne, and he's going to reign. So what is, it, what is this talk of God moving his throne into Iran? And you and I have independently come to the same conclusion. And that is, there's going to be a season prior to Christ's coming where it's going to be clear that the gospel message is so penetrating into Iran. God says, I'm going to restore the fortunes of the people of Iran. I'm going to bless them. And we believe that the moving of the, of the, the, the throne into Iran Iran means that Christ is going to really broadcast his gospel to draw, drive the Great Commission from Iran. And I, I've always thought, not always, but once I began to think about this and talk to you about it, you know, a Shia Muslim who is so radicalized but comes to Christ can be just as radical but in the power of the Holy Spirit, fearless. If you're willing to die for Allah, how much more are they willing to live and preach life uh, through Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I, I actually believe we're moving into that season now. I think it's going to accelerate, but when you've got somewhere between one and three million followers of Jesus Christ in Iran today, that's, that's extraordinary. There is no other country in the Middle East where there's that many Muslims who've left Islam and come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ than in Iran. So. Uh, in many ways, you'd have to start saying that is becoming the center of Christendom among the MBB movement, the Muslim background believer movement. And that's pretty exciting. Amen. And I'm very excited and thankful because I read the biography of uh, missionaries in Iran, how hard it was, uh, so many years for few converts. And here with the simplest right. message on, on the air, people are coming to Christ. Right, and it's a timing issue. It's the Spirit's moving now. William Miller wrote, uh, he was a Presbyterian missionary for 42 years. He writes about the 10 Muslims that came to Christ that he saw, you know, and really can write about. Well, praise God that there were 10, but you know, like that, that was a season where the fruit was so little. But and now there's so much more. And just one other quick thing, uh, we won't get into the details, but Isaiah 19, talking about Egypt and Syria, where there'll be a dramatic uh, spiritual awakening, and then God is going to join uh, in the kingdom to come, Syria, Israel, and Egypt as one. That's, that's not there yet, <laughs> but it's coming, and it means that God is going to pour out His Spirit and draw many Syrians, many Egyptians, and many Jews into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. God is writing history today in yes. the Middle East, and He calls us to be a part of it, and I'm so grateful God has called me. And this time in history, given a media, a tool that I can get into people's homes, and it's a time we Christians wake up and see what God is doing and join Him. Yes. Uh, what would you say on that? Absolutely. Well, look, I, Hormoz, you know I, I, I've, I've dubbed you the Billy Graham of Iran, oh, right? I, I've, and I met Billy Graham numerous times. I, I loved his calling. You know, you can't just decide you're going to be an evangelist. God has to call you and gift you and then open doors in an extraordinary way. Now, you can't go fill stadiums inside Iran, but with your spiritual gifting, the open doors that God has provided, and the team at Iran Alive Ministries that provide you with all the assistance and, of course, your financial donors that help you and stand with you, you are reaching more Iranian Muslims than 
anybody else. And, and, and while there's wonderful other ministries yes. that do great work and, 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 and the body of Christ works together, still it is amazing that someone who was raised a Shia Muslim, who in 1979 was on the streets of Tehran saying death to America, death to Israel, now you're like, oh, maybe not death to America quite yet. I'd like to go to graduate school over there. You came to Christ, your wife came to Christ, and now God has called you into reaching millions and millions of Iranians. This is, this is miraculous stuff. Yes. And, and yet in some ways, what I think is so many American Christians don't realize, A, that Iran is as open to the gospel as, as, to, as today, or that they don't even know that you and Iran Alive Ministries exist. Yes. And that's one of the things I love partnering with you, is trying to explain to people, tell people, that this is a great ministry to be involved with. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I tell people, come get involved because, not because it's Iran, because I'm Iranian, because it's where God is working. Uh, not because there is a need. I say both. Yeah. He's working, but it's Iran. <laughs> you know, the most dangerous country on the, uh, one of the most dangerous on the planet. And go reach a dangerous country for Jesus. That's right. I've, I've invited them many <laughs> times. I invited you, and I still do, to come and join us. Be a part of what God is doing. Be a part of writing history. And I want you to invite our friends to come and join in this move of God. I would love to. Yeah, I would just encourage you, if, you have, uh, if, you are, are, if you're currently uh, someone who invests in the ministry of Iran Alive Ministries, I would encourage you to continue doing that. It's, an, it's a tremendous investment with eternal benefits, right? You're not going to get a return on your investment now, right? But you know that by pr planting the seeds of the gospel and by helping disciple uh, Muslims who've come out of Islam, who've come to Christ, who have really no other way to be discipled except through television, because that's the safest way to do it, um, that you know that you're investing uh, in, in, a, in, in an eternal mission. But some of you have never been aware of this ministry, you're just beginning to be aware, and I would encourage you, this is the moment to take out a checkbook and write a check to Iran Alive Ministries, because this is the most exciting investment. Now, I would love you to give all your money to Jewish missions uh, through the Joshua Fund, but what, the reason I don't ask you for that is because there's so much more that has to happen. And God is calling some to reach Iran, and some to reach Egypt, and some to reach Israel and other places. But this is a powerful ministry. I know it personally. I've been on the air. I've seen people, Muslims, come to Christ in our discussions as they call in uh, from all around the, uh, the Iranian uh, Farsi-speaking world. And so I just love the fruit that's being born. And I love the heart of sincerity uh, and, 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 and spiritual uh, clarity and depth that Hormoz and his team bring to this ministry. You can't say that about every ministry in the world, but you can say it about Iran Alive Ministry. So as someone who has a, a deep love for the people of Iran um, and a deep love for this brother, I, I would just encourage you, um, learn more about the ministry and get involved financially and prayerfully. Uh, I'm grateful for it, and I can't wait to meet you in heaven and see all the people that you helped uh, touch for the gospel uh, through getting involved in Iran Alive Ministries. Well, thank you so much. You always have been a blessing to our ministry, to me, over the years, and you have been a guest on the program, and you're invited <laughs> anytime. You I just, would love to do it. Call and say, I'm coming now, uh -oh. and we're going to have a program because people love you, and uh, people love to see, the people of Iran love to see us together. Mm -hmm. They love to see how Jesus brings people together. So you're invited again back. You have I been would in love the past that. And, Thank you. And we would be honored to have you it back. Would be my we'll honor. preach in our church service. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate God bless it. you. Great to Thank be you. with you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you.